Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Rivers of Possibilities. Today's focus is on the making of a new city. The Greater Port Harcourt City project, worth hundreds of billions of Naira, was embarked upon by the current governor of River State, Rotimi Amechi, to develop and expand Port Harcourt into a modern world-class city, as well as check congestions in the old city. The Greater Port Harcourt City Master Plan implementation approach involves a phased development of the new city, beginning with Phase 1, which is divided into four sub-phases and located in the northern axis of the plan, near the Port Harcourt International Airport. Work has commenced in the first phase of the Greater Port Harcourt City. 30,000 housing units are planned for the first phase of the project, with a start-up development of 3,000 housing units. Now, when the land is allocated to you, we are already at the point of uh, allocating now. People have bought farms, you know, they are for residential developments. Uh, the commercial areas are there, you know, and then when you buy a farm and the lands are allocated to you, first thing we expect you to do is to come with your plants to this uh, the department and then you apply for a full planning permission and they will look at what you have done and now guide you into giving you an approval. Before now, people buy the properties, they don't even go to, to the, any agency to, uh, for, to seek for any permits and they just go ahead and develop. And that's why you see buildings without setbacks, buildings directly on the road, right of way and all that. So what we are doing now is to make sure that at the end of the day, you begin to see planned developments. You can, you, you can apply for your land under five categories, either as a public office holder, or as a civil servant, a public servant, or as a professional. So you're a professional, you can apply under that. We also have reserved some um, um, plots for host communities that have partnered with us in the development of the area. And then the last set of people are people who are not indigenous to Port Harcourt, but who live here, who want to be able to open the space and make them feel part of what we're doing. So under these five categories, the ballot process will take place for each of these categories. And if you're fortunate to um, pick the lucky dip, then we can allocate the land to you. But the condition, of course, like I said earlier, is that you're going to develop immediately. With the ongoing construction of roads, drainages, water scheme, electricity and other necessary infrastructural facilities, the new city is fast attracting individual and corporate developers. Land ownership in the new city, however, is dependent on an approved building plan stipulated by the authority. While the process of land ownership is expected to take 30 working days, convincing some developers to build by the books poses a challenge. Over the years, government was not regulating the developments. So you had, it, it was difficult to get the buy-in of the citizens that we must enforce we must regulate what you're doing and how you're doing it. So it's been a challenge as well. But I must say that we've had um, um, responses to show that people want to know what they can do and how they can do it. So at least we were able to come over that challenge with time. Other developments for phase one include an 18-hole golf course, schools, hospitals, and the sports village which houses the Adokie Amiesimaka Stadium. In the complex, we have an aquatic center made up of two racing pools and two diving pools. We have a basketball courts. We have tennis courts. Basketball, we have two. Tennis, we have six. Uh, we have six years. Then uh, we have handball. We have volleyball courts and we have indoor sports hall, we have a sports gym. We have squash courts and we have a shooting range. But the bigger picture is that it will serve as a sports tourism center. Of course, people will come from very far to see what we have here. This 38,000 sitter capacity stadium takes the shine, the first of its kind in the state. 
The closest to this is uh, Civic Center, a radiated SPIF city, uh, civic center built by SPIF during the military era. But uh, in sheer grandeur, there's nothing close to this. So it can be used for uh, uh, sports festivals. Can be, if Nigeria is bidding for Olympics, for instance, or any international competition, this would be certainly a venue to be used. I mean, we are, if you're hosting something like uh, All African Games, or we are hosting uh, uh, any of such games, this place can be a venue. And this is strictly funded by the state government, or you have the private sector? One hundred percent funded by the state government. One hundred percent funded. But we won't mind if we find a willing buyer or a willing concessionaire who will want to uh, manage the place and uh, maintain it, and maybe let us have some cost recovery. A power substation is located in the first phase to provide and ensure constant electricity supply to residents. But the current phase 1A is not hoping to expand beyond 15 megawatts. Um, 15 megawatts will be with a lot of redundancy if uh, they are provided with that. Meanwhile, the different sources I've just mentioned will have power. It's necessary of 750 megawatts, 721 megawatts actually. And if what they need is under 15 megawatts, you can see that from Amok with 150 megawatts, you can conveniently supply their need. From Afam with 250 mega, 360 megawatts, you can conveniently supply their need. From Transamadu with 100 megawatts, you can conveniently supply their need. And from the grid, which throws in about 100 megawatts, you can equally completely supply their needs. So there isn't uh, any fear. Remember that because part of the things we are selling and selling the new city is power, the emphasis will be to make them our priority customer to ensure that whatever happens, there is power in the new city. If you drive through our streets in most cities, you will see the curb where we call power lines. In the new city, you will not see that. Um, they intend to distribute on the ground and um, they also intend to distribute with materials that we are going to be durable and the connections are going to be such that they cannot be tampered with. So the issues of vandalism uh, will not be experienced. The issues of uh, accidents, people running into pools and then pulling them down and by so doing, everybody going out of power will also not be experienced. The issue of interference by the elements, like when there is thunderstorm and the um, wire lines are breached by thunderstorms and the light will also be avoided. So it's, it's, it's a system that is a bit uh, proof of uh, the usual impedance that is experienced uh, in the regular, usual way we supply power in the country. With the first phase about to get occupied by individuals and businesses, investment opportunities abound for players in the private sector. The investors should strive to take a ground floor uh, position. Uh, they should uh, you know, uh, come in when it's early, come in when it's affordable, and come in when the upside can be quite significant. You know, there's quite a bit of proposals on their desk for companies that want land there to build their offices and build out their warehouses and uh, more importantly, the sale of the lots, about over 100 lots right now. The River State Public Procurement Law of 2008, Public-Private Partnership Law of 2009, and the Federal Government's Infrastructure Concession and Regulatory Commission Act of 2005, amongst others, exist to ensure due process and transparency in the government's transactions and protection of private investments, amongst others. Poised to attract investors, the state has put forward several incentives. These include a five-year tax holiday, free land in the new city, rebate on offtake guarantees, international carbon credits, and other special concessions for investors who meet certain regulatory requirements as spelt out by the Greater Port Harcourt Development Authority. We're also talking with the institutional people who are building their own, um, their own housing, which they would sell to members of the public. These areas are more densified, so you'd have more structures. For such institutional developers, what the, the board has approved is that you can pay 20% of the cost of the value of the land so that you can 
apply your money in carrying out the development rather than pay us 100% of the cost of the value of the land. And then when you sell your uh, apartments, the allottees or the buyers will then offset the balance of the cost of the land with the, cost, with the, with the, with the purchase price. So that way we free 80% of the monies you'd ordinarily have tied down in buying the land. We free that money so you can use it to carry out your development on the land. The success recorded so far did not come without its fair share of challenges. At the initial stage, convincing indigents in the area housing the new city was no easy task. While most people have warmed up to the idea and benefits of the new city, meetings and sensitization campaigns are ongoing to ensure all parties are constantly in agreement. It's the making of a new city here in Port Harcourt and a state filled with possibilities. You can drop your comments or suggestions on the address on your screen or drop a note on our Rivers of Possibilities page on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter at Rivers of underscore P. I'm Oni Sunday. Thanks for watching.